Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. Physics Textbook of Class 12th Part 1 Chapter 8 Electromagnetic Waves Narrated by Isna Rafat Khan Introduction In Chapter 4 we learnt that an electric current produces magnetic field and that two electric current wires carrying the current exerts a magnetic force on each other. Further in Chapter 6 we have seen that magnetic field changing with time gives rise to an electric field. Is the converse also true? Does an electric field changing with time gives rise to a magnetic field? James Clerk Maxwell argued that it was indeed the case. Not only electric current, but also a time-varying electric field generates magnetic field. While applying Ampere's circuital law to find magnetic field at a point outside the capacitor connected to a time-varying current, Maxwell noticed an inconsistency in the Ampere's circuital law. He suggested that the existence of an additional current called by him the displacement current to remove this inconsistency. Maxwell formulated a set of equations involving electric and magnetic field and their sources, the charge and the current densities. These equations are known as Maxwell's equations. Together with Lorentz's force formula, they mathematically represent all the basic laws of electromagnetism. The most important prediction to emerge from the Maxwell's equations is the existence of electromagnetic waves, which are coupled time-varying electric and magnetic fields that propagate in space. The speed of the waves according to these equations tend out to be very close to the speed of light, obtained from the optical measurements. This led to a remarkable conclusion that light is an electromagnetic wave. Maxwell's work thus unified the domain of electricity, magnetism, and light. Hertz in 1885 experimentally demonstrated the existence of electromagnetic waves. Its technological use by Marconi and others led in due course to the revolution in the communication that we are witnessing today. In this chapter, we first discuss the need of displacement current and its consequences, then we present a descriptive account of the electromagnetic waves, a broad spectrum of electromagnetic waves stretching from the gamma rays to long radio waves is described, how the electromagnetic waves are sent and received for communications are discussed in chapter number 15. Displacement Current we have seen in chapter 4 that an electric current produces a magnetic field around it. Maxwell showed that for logic consistency, a changing electric field must also produce the magnetic field. This effect is of great importance because it explains the existence of the radio waves, gamma rays and the visible light, as well as the other forms of electromagnetic waves. To see how a changing electric field gives rise to a magnetic field, let us consider the process of the charging of capacitor and apply Ampere's circuital law to find the magnetic field at a point outside the capacitor. Figure 8.1a shows the parallel plate capacitor which is a part of the circuit through which a time-dependent current flows. Let us find the magnetic field at point such as P in a region outside the parallel plate capacitor. For this we consider a plane circular loop of radius R whose plane is perpendicular to the direction of the current carrying wire which is centered symmetrically with respect to the wire. From symmetry the magnetic field is directed along the circumference of the circular loop and is same in magnitude at all the points on the loop. Now consider a different surface which has the same boundary. This is a pot-like surface which never touches the current but has its bottom between the capacitor plates. 
Its mouth is circular loop mentioned above. Another such surface is shaped like a tiffin box without a lid. On applying ampere circuital law to such a surface with the same perimeter, we find that the left hand of the equation has not changed, but right hand side is zero, not mu i, since no current passes through the surface. So we have a contradiction. Calculated one way, there is a magnetic field at a point P. Calculated the other way, the magnetic field at P is zero. Since the contradiction rises from the use of ampere circuital law, this law must be missing something. The missing term must be such that one gets the same magnetic field at point P, no matter what surface is used. We can actually guess the missing term by looking carefully at figure 8.1c. Is there anything passing through the surface S between the plates of the capacitor? Yes, of course, the electric field. But the plate of the capacitor have an area A and total charge Q. The magnitude of electric field E between the plates is Q by A by epsilon. This field is perpendicular to the surface S. It has the same magnitude over the area A of the capacitor plates and vanishes outside it. So what is the electric flux through the surface S? Using Gauss law, it is electric flux is equals to Q by epsilon. Now, if the charge Q on the capacitor plates changes with time, there is a current I. I is equals to du Q by dt. So that using the equation, we have d flux by dt is equals to 1 by epsilon into dq by dt. This implies that for consistency, epsilon into d flux by dt is equals to i. This is the missing term in the ampere circuital law. If we generalize this law by adding the total current carried by conductors through the surface, another term which is epsilon times the rate of change of electric flux through the same surface, the total has the same value of the current I for all the surface. If this is done, there is no contradiction in the value of B obtained anywhere using the generalized Ampere's law. B at the point is non-zero no matter which surface is used for calculating it. B at a point P outside the plate is the same as at point M just inside, as it should be. The current carried by the conductors due to the flow of charge is called the conduction current. The current given by equation 8.4 is a new term and is due to the changing electric field or the electric displacement and old term is still used sometimes. It is therefore called displacement current or the Maxwell's displacement current. Figure 8.2 shows the electric and the magnetic fields inside the parallel plate capacitor discussed above. The generalization made by Maxwell then is the following. The source of magnetic field is not just conduction, electric current due to the flowing charges, but also the time rate of change of electric field. More precisely, the total current I is the sum of the conduction current denoted by IC and the displacement current is denoted by ID. I is equals to IE plus ID is equals to IC plus epsilon deflux by DT. In explicit terms, this means that outside the capacitor plates, we have only one conduction current, IC is equals to I, and no displacement current, ID is equals to zero. On the other hand, inside the capacitor, there is no conduction current, that is IC is equals to zero. The generalized and correct Ampere circuital law has the same form as equation 8.1. With one difference, the total current passing through any surface of which the closed loop is the parameter is the sum of the conduction current and the displacement current. This is known as the Ampere-Maxwell law. 
In all respects, the displacement current has same physical effects as the conduction current. In some cases, for example, steady electric fields in a conducting wire, the displacement current may be zero since the electric field E does not change with time. In another case, for example, the charging capacitor above, both conduction and displacement currents may be present in different regions of space. In most of the cases, they both may be present in the same region of space as there exists no perfectly conducting or perfectly insulating medium. More interestingly, there may be large regions of space where there is no conduction current, but there is only a displacement current due to the time-varying electric field. In such a region, we expect a magnetic field though there is no current source nearby. The prediction of such a displacement current can be verified experimentally. For example, a magnetic field, say at point M, between the plates of a capacitor can be measured and is seen to be same as just outside at P. The displacement current has literally far-reaching consequences. One thing we immediately notice is that the law of electricity and magnetism are now more symmetrical. Faraday's law of induction states that there is an induced EMF equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Now, since the EMF between the two points 1 and 2 is the work done per unit charge in taking it from 1 to 2, the existence of an EMF implies the existence of an electric field. So, we can rephrase Faraday's law of electromagnetism induction by saying that a magnetic field changing with time gives rise to an electric field. Then the fact that an electric field changing with time gives rise to a magnetic field is symmetrical counterpart and is a consequence of the displacement current being a source of the magnetic field. Thus, time dependent in electric and magnetic fields gives rise to each other. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and Ampere's Maxwell law gives a quantitative expression of this statement, with the current being the total current as in equation 8.5. One very important consequence of this symmetry is the existence of the electromagnetic waves, which we will discuss qualitatively in the next section. Electromagnetic Waves Sources of Electromagnetic Waves How are electromagnetic waves produced? Neither stationary charges nor charge in the uniform motion can be the source of electromagnetic wave. The former produce only electrostatic fields, while the latter produces magnetic fields that however do not vary with time. It is an important result of Maxwell theory that accelerated charges radiate electromagnetic waves. The proof of this basic result is beyond the scope of this book, but we can accept it on some frequency. An oscillating charge is an example of accelerating charge. This producing an oscillating electric field in space, which produces an oscillating magnetic field, which in turn is a source of oscillating electric field and so on. The oscillating electric and magnetic fields thus regenerate each other. So to peak, as the wave propagates through the space, the frequency of the electromagnetic waves naturally equals the frequency of the oscillation of charge. The energy associated with the propagating waves come to expense of the energy of the source, the accelerated charge. From the preceding discussion, it might appear easy to test the prediction that light is an electromagnetic wave. We might think that all we needed to do was to set up an AC circuit in which the electric current oscillate at a frequency of visible light, say yellow light. But alas, this is not possible. The frequency of yellow light is about 6 into 10 to the power 14 hertz while the frequency that we get even with modern electronic circuits is hardly about 10 to the power 11 hertz. This is why the experimental demonstration of electromagnetic wave had to come in the low frequency region. 
the radio wave region as in the Hertz experiment 1887. Hertz's successful experimental test of Maxwell's theory created a sensation and sparked off other important works in this field. Two important achievements in this connection deserves mention. Seven years after Hertz, Jagdish Chandra Bose, working at Calcutta, succeeded in producing and observing electromagnetic waves of much shorter wavelength. His experiment, like that of Hertz, was confined to a laboratory. At around the same time, Guglielmo Macroni in Italy followed Hertz's work and succeeded in transmitting electromagnetic waves over distance of many kilometers. Macroni's experiment marks the beginning of the field of communication using electromagnetic waves. Nature of electromagnetic waves It can be shown from Maxwell's equation that electric and magnetic fields in an electromagnetic waves are perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation. It appears reasonable, say, from our discussion of the displacement current. Consider figure 8.2. The electric field inside the plates of the capacitor is directed perpendicular to the plates. The magnetic field is given rise via the displacement current along the perimeter of the circle parallel to the capacitor plates. So B and E are perpendicular in this case. This is a general feature. In figure 8.4, we show a typical example of a plane electromagnetic wave propagating along the Z direction. The fields are shown as a function of Z coordinate at a given time t. The electric field EX is along the X axis and varies sinusoidally with Z at a given time. The magnetic field BY is along the Y axis and again varies sinusoidally with Z. The electric and magnetic fields EX and BY are perpendicular to each other and to the direction Z of propagation. We can write EX and BY as follows. EX is equals to E0 sin KZ minus omega T. BY is equals to B0 sin KZ minus omega T. Here K is related to the wavelength lambda of the wave by the usual equation k is equals to 2 pi by lambda and the angular frequency k is the magnitude of the wave vector or propagation vector k and its direction describes the direction of propagation of the wave the speed of propagation of the wave is omega by k Using equation 8.7 A and B for EX and BY and Maxwell's equation, one finds that omega is equals to CK where C is equals to 1 by under root mu naught epsilon naught. The relation omega is equals to CK is the standard one for waves. This relation is often written in terms of frequency nu is equals to omega by 2 pi and wavelength lambda is equals to 2 pi by k as 2 pi mu is equals to c into 2 pi by lambda or nu lambda is equals to c. It is also seen from Maxwell's equation that the magnitude of the electric and magnetic fields in an electromagnetic wave are related as B0 is equals to E0 by C. We here make remarks on some features of electromagnetic waves. They are self-sustaining oscillations of electric and magnetic fields in free space or vacuum. They differ from all other waves and have studied so far in respect that no material medium is involved in the vibration of electric and magnetic fields. Sound waves in the air are longitudinal waves of compression and rarefaction. Transverse waves on the surface of water consist of water moving up and down as the wave spread horizontally and radially onwards. 
Transverse elastic sound waves can also propagate in a solid which is rigid and that resists shear. Scientists in the 19th century were so much used to this mechanical picture that they thought that there must be some medium pervading all space and all matter, which responds to the electric and magnetic fields just as any elastic medium does. They call this medium ether. They were so convinced of the reality of this medium that there is even a novel called The Poison Belt by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the famous detective Sherlock Holmes, where the solar system is supposed to pass through a poisonous region of ether. We now accept that no such physical medium is needed. The famous experiment of Michelson and Morley in 1887 demolished conclusively the hypothesis of ether. Electric and magnetic fields oscillating in space and time can sustain each other in vacuum. But what if a material medium is actually there? We know that light and electromagnetic wave does propagate through glass, for example, we have seen earlier that the total electric and magnetic fields inside a medium are described in terms of a permittivity epsilon and a magnetic permeability mu. These describe the factors by which the total field differ from the external field. These replaces epsilon naught and mu naught in the description to electric and magnetic fields in the Maxwell's equation with the result that in a material medium of permittivity epsilon and magnetic permeability mu, the velocity of the light becomes V is equals to 1 by under root mu epsilon. Thus, the velocity of light depends on electric and magnetic properties of the medium. We shall see in the next chapter that the refractive index of one medium with respect to the other is equal to the ratio of velocities of the light in the two media. The velocity of electromagnetic waves in free space or vacuum is an important fundamental constant. It has been shown by experiments on electromagnetic waves of different wavelengths that this velocity is the same independent of wavelength to within few meters per second out of a value of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. The constancy of the velocity of EM waves in the vacuum is so strongly supported by the experiments and the actual value is so well known that now this is used to define the standard of length. Namely, the meter is now defined as the distance travelled by light in a vacuum in time 1 by c seconds. This has come about for a following reason. The basic unit of time can be defined very accurately in terms of some atomic frequency, that is, frequency of light emitted by an atom in a particular process. The basic unit of light is harder to define as accurately in a direct way. Earlier measurement of C using earlier units of length converged to a value of about 2.9979246 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Since C is such a strongly fixed number, unit of length can be defined in terms of C and the unit of time. Hertz not only showed the existence of electromagnetic waves, but also demonstrated that the waves which had wavelength 10 million times the light waves could be diffracted, or refracted and polarized. Thus, he conclusively established the wave nature of radiation. Further, he produced stationary electromagnetic waves and determined their wavelength by measuring the distance between two successive nodes. Since the frequency of the wave was known being equal to the frequency of oscillator, he obtained the speed of the wave using the formula V is equals to mu lambda and found that the waves traveled with the same speed as the same speed of light. 
The fact that electromagnetic waves are polarized can be easily seen in the response of a portable AM radio to a broadcasting station. If an AM radio has a telescope antenna, it responds to the electric part of the signal. When the antenna is turned horizontal, the signal will be greatly diminished. Some portable radios have horizontal antenna, usually inside the case of radio which are sensitive to the magnetic component of the electromagnetic wave. Such a radio must remain horizontal in order to receive the signal. In such case, response also depends on the orientation of the radio with respect to the station. Do electromagnetic waves carry energy and momentum like other waves? Yes, they do. We have seen in Chapter 2 that in a region of free space with electric field E, there is an energy density epsilon naught E square by 2. Similarly, as seen in Chapter 6 associated with magnetic field, a magnetic energy density B square by 2 mu naught as electromagnetic waves contain both electric and magnetic fields, there is a non-zero energy density associated with it. Now consider a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of electromagnetic waves. If there are on this plane electric charges, they will be set and sustained in a motion by electric and magnetic fields of the electromagnetic waves. The charge thus acquire energy and momentum from the waves. This just illustrates the fact that an electromagnetic wave, like other waves, carries energy and momentum. Since it carries momentum and electromagnetic waves also exerts pressure, called the radiation pressure, if the total energy transferred to the surface in time t is u, it can be shown that the magnitude of the total momentum delivered to its surface for complete absorption is p is equals to u by c. When the sun shines on your hand, you feel energy being absorbed from the electromagnetic waves, your hand gets warm. Electromagnetic waves also transfer momentum to your hand but because C is very large, the amount of momentum transferred is extremely small and you do not feel the pressure. In 1903, an American scientist Nicholas and Hull succeed in measuring radiation pressure of the visible light and verified equation 8.12. It was found to be of the order of 7 into 10 to the power minus 6 Newton per meter square. Thus, on the surface area 10 cm square, the force due to radiation is only about 7 into 10 to the power minus 9 Newtons. The great technological importance of electromagnetic wave stem from their capacity to carry energy from one place to another. The radio and TV signals from broadcasting stations carry energy. Light carries energy from the sun to the earth, thus making life possible on the earth. Electromagnetic Spectrum At the time Maxwell predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves, the only familiar electromagnetic waves were the visible light waves. The existence of ultraviolet and infrared waves was barely established. By the end of the 19th century, X-rays and gamma rays had also been discovered. We now know that electromagnetic waves include visible light waves, X-rays, gamma rays, radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet waves, infrared waves. The classification of EM waves according to the frequency of electromagnetic spectrum. There is no sharp division between one kind of wave and the next. The classification is based roughly on how the waves are produced or detected. We briefly describe these different types of electromagnetic waves in order of decreasing wavelength. Radio waves. Radio waves are produced by the accelerated motion of charges in the conducting wires. They are used in the radio and television communication system. They are generally in the frequency range from 500 kHz 
to about 1000 megahertz the am that is the amplitude modulated band is from 530 kilohertz to 1710 kilohertz higher frequencies up to 54 megahertz are used for short wave bands TV waves ranges from 54 MHz to 890 MHz. The FM frequency modulated radio band extends from 88 MHz to 108 MHz. Cellular phones use radio waves to transmit voice communication in an ultraviolet frequency band. How these waves are transmitted and perceived is described in Chapter 15. Microwaves Microwaves, short wavelength radio waves with frequencies in gigahertz range are produced by the special vacuum tubes called the cliostron, magnetrons and the gun diodes. Due to their short wavelengths, they are suitable for the radar system used in the aircraft navigation. Radar also provides the basis of the speed guns used to time fastballs tennis serves and automobiles. Microwave ovens are an interesting domestic application of these waves. In such ovens, the frequency of microwaves is selected to match the resonant frequency of water molecules so that the energy from the waves is transferred efficiently to the kinetic energy of the molecules. This raises the temperature of any food containing water. Microwave oven the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation contains a part known as microwaves. These waves have frequency and energy smaller than the visible light and wavelength larger than it. What is the principle of a microwave oven and how does it work? Our objective is to cook food and warm it up. All the food items such as fruit, vegetables, meat, cereals, etc. contains water as a constituent. Now, what does it mean when we say that a certain object has become warmer? When the temperature of the body rises, the energy of the random motion of atoms and molecules increases and the molecules travel or vibrate or rotate with high energies. The frequency of rotation of water molecule is about 300 crore hertz, which is 3 gigahertz. If water receives microwaves of this frequency, its molecule absorbs this radiation, which is equivalent to heating up water. These molecules share this energy with the neighboring food molecules heating up the food. One should use the porcelain vessels and not the metal containers in a microwave oven because of the danger of getting a shock from the accumulated electric charges. Metal may also melt from heating. The porcelain container remains unaffected and cool because its large molecule vibrate and rotate with much smaller frequencies and thus cannot absorb microwaves. Hence, they cannot get heated up. Thus, the basic principle of the microwave oven is to generate microwave radiation of appropriate frequency in the working space of the oven where we keep food. This way energy is not wasted in heating up the vessel. It is conventional heating method. The vessel of the burner gets heat first and then the food gets heated inside because of the transfer of energy from the vessel. In microwave oven, on the other hand, the energy is directly delivered to the water molecules which is shared by the entire food. Infrared waves Infrared waves are produced by hot bodies and molecules. This band lies adjacent to the low frequency or long wavelength end of the visible spectrum. Infrared waves are sometimes referred to as the heat waves. This is because water molecules present in most materials readily absorb infrared rays. Many other molecules, for example CO2, NH3 can also absorb infrared waves. After absorption, their thermal motion increases, that is, they heat up and they heat their surroundings. Infrared lamps are used in the physical therapy. Infrared radiation also plays an important role in maintaining the Earth's warmth or average temperature through the greenhouse effect. 
incoming visible light which passes relatively easy through the atmosphere is absorbed by the earth's surface and is re-radiated as infrared longer wavelength radiations. This radiation is trapped by the greenhouse gases such as the carbon dioxide and water vapor. Infrared detectors are used in earth satellites both for military purposes and to observe growth of crops. Electronic devices for example semiconductors, light emitting diode also emit infrared and are widely used in the remote switches of the household electronic systems such as TV video recorders and hi-fi systems visible rays it is the most familiar form of the electromagnetic wave it is the part of the spectrum that is detected by the human eye it runs from about 4 into 10 to the power 14 hertz to about 7 into 10 to the power 14 hertz or a wavelength range of about 700 to 400 nanometers Visible light emitted or reflected from the object around us provides us information about the world. Our eyes are sensitive to this range of wavelengths. Different animals are sensitive to different range of wavelengths. For example, snakes can detect infrared waves and the visible range of many insects extends well into the ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays. It covers wavelength ranging from about 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters, 400 nanometers, down to 6 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters or 0.6 nanometers. Ultraviolet UV radiation is produced by a special lamp and very hot bodies. The sun is an important source of the ultraviolet light, but fortunately, most of it is absorbed in the ozone layer in the atmosphere at an altitude of about 40 to 50 kilometers. Ultraviolet in large quantities has harmful effects on humans. Exposure to UV radiation induces the production of the more melanin, causing the tanning of the skin. UV radiation is absorbed by the ordinary glass, hence one cannot get tanned or sunburn through the glass windows. Welders wear the special glass goggles or face mask with the glass windows to protect their eyes from the large amount of UV produced by welding arcs. Due to the shorter wavelength, UV radiations can be focused into very narrow beams for high precision applications such as LASIK, laser assisted in situ keratomeliosis eye surgery. UV lamps are used to kill the germs in the water purifiers. Ozone layer in the atmosphere plays a protective role and hence its depletion by the CFCs gas such as Freon is a matter of international concern. X-rays Beyond the UV region, the electromagnetic spectrum lies the X-ray region. We are familiar with the X-ray because of its medical application. It covers wavelengths from about 10 to the power minus 10 meters, that is 10 nanometer, down to 10 to the power minus 13 meters. One common way to generate X-ray is to bombard a metal target by high-energy electrons. X-rays are used as a diagnostic tool in the medicine and as a treatment of certain forms of cancer because X-rays damage or destroy living tissue and organisms. Care must be taken to avoid unnecessary or overexposure. Gamma rays they lie in the upper frequency range of the electromagnetic spectrum and have wavelengths from about 10 to the power minus 10 meters to less than 10 to the power minus 14 meters. This high frequency radiation is produced in nuclear reaction and is also emitted by the radioactive nuclei. They are used in medicine to destroy the cancer cells. Table 8.1 summarizes the different types of electromagnetic waves, their production and detection. As mentioned earlier, the demarcation between the different regions is not sharp and there are overlaps. Summary 
Maxwell found an inconsistency in the Ampere's law and suggested that the existence of an additional current called the displacement current to remove this inconsistency. This displacement current is due to the time varying electric field and is given by ID is equals to epsilon naught d phi e by dt and acts as a source of magnetic field in exactly the same way as conduction current. 2. An accelerating charge produces the electromagnetic waves, an electric charge oscillating harmonically with the frequency nu produces electromagnetic waves of the same frequency nu. An electric dipole is a basic source of the electromagnetic waves. 3. Electromagnetic waves with the wavelength of order of a few meters were first produced and detected in the laboratory by Hertz in 1887. He thus verified a basic prediction of the Maxwell's equation. 4. Electric and the magnetic fields oscillate sinusoidally in space and time in an electromagnetic wave. The oscillating electric and magnetic fields E and B are perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. For a wave of frequency nu, wavelength lambda propagating along z direction, we have E is equals to EXT is equals to E naught sin KZ minus omega T and B is equals to BYT is equals to B sin KZ minus omega T. They are related by E0 by B0 is equals to C. 5. The speed C of electromagnetic wave in vacuum is related to mu0 and epsilon0, the free space permeability and permittivity constants, as C is equals to 1 by under root mu0 into epsilon0. The value of C is equals to the speed of light. Light is an electromagnetic wave, C is therefore also the speed of light. Electromagnetic wave other than the light also have the same velocity C in free space. The speed of light or the electromagnetic wave in the material medium is given by V is equals to 1 by under root mu epsilon. 6. Electromagnetic wave carry energy as they travel through the space and this energy is shared equally by the electric and the magnetic fields. Electromagnetic waves transport momentum as well. When these waves strike a surface, a pressure is exerted on the surface. If the total energy is transferred to a surface in time t is u, the total momentum delivered to this surface is p is equals to u by c. 7. The spectrum of the electromagnetic wave stretches, in principle, over an infinite range of the wavelengths. Different regions are known by different names gamma rays, x rays, ultraviolet rays, visible rays, infrared waves, microwaves, and the radio waves, in order of their increasing wavelength. They interact with the matter via their electric and magnetic fields which set in oscillation charges present in all matter. The detailed interaction and so the mechanism of absorption, scattering etc. depends on the wavelength of electromagnetic wave and the nature of atoms and molecules in the medium. Points to ponder 1. The basic difference between the various types of electromagnetic waves lies in their wavelength or frequencies. Since all of them travel through vacuum with same speed, consequently, the waves differ considerably in their mode of interaction with matter. 2. Accelerated charged particle radiate electromagnetic waves. The wavelength of the electromagnetic wave is often correlated with the characteristic size of the system that radiates. Thus, gamma radiation having wavelength of 10 to the power minus 14 meters to 10 to the power minus 15 meters typically originate from an atomic nucleus. X-rays are emitted from the heavy atoms. Radio waves are produced by the accelerating electrons in a circuit. A transmitting antenna can most efficiently radiate waves having a wavelength of about the same size as the antenna. Visible radiation emitted by atoms is, however, much longer in the wavelength than the atomic size. 
3. The oscillating fields of an electromagnetic wave can accelerate charges and can produce oscillating currents. Therefore, an apparatus designed to detect electromagnetic waves is based on this fact. Hertz original receiver worked in exactly this way. The same basic principle is utilized in practically all modern receiving devices. High frequency electromagnetic waves are detected by other means based on the physical effect they produced on interacting with matter. Fourth, Infrared waves with frequencies lower than those of the visible light vibrate not only electrons but entire atoms or molecules of the substance. This vibration increases the internal energy and consequently the temperature of the substance. This is why infrared waves are often called the heat waves. The center of sensitivity of our eyes coincides with the center of the wavelength distribution of the sun. It is because humans have evolved with visions most sensitive to the strongest wavelength from the sun.